Madhouse Podcasting Network. Sammy, this is Jeremy. Jeremy, this is Sammy. You Who's guys that? haven't formally met yet. I turned on your two thirty. Sorry, I was, setting, I was setting my alarms. Yeah, we met. Um, we met briefly. Met <clears throat> briefly, yeah. and uh, now you're meeting uh, Haunt, more, Haunt more brief. And uh, yeah, sure. so yeah, thanks for joining us, man. It's my my pleasure. No, it's our pleasure to be quite honest. <laughs> no one ever asked me to do interviews, so anytime someone asks me, I'm, I'm game. Well, they that... always want Tony. That's not true. <laughs> Hotline asks us to do an interview. They always want Tony. They're like, Tony is the face of the channel. And then when someone said, I'm also a face, I, I just about cried. Well, to us, it's the two of you guys, so. How many times have I told you there is no Knights of Horror without you? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. He said that's true. See, I'm, the wind, <laughs> uh, I'm the wind beneath your wind. That was a fucking Biederman answer right there. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, there's no Night's Horror without you. And he goes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I said, who's Sammy? That was my answer. That's funny. Yeah. Well, let's get this uh, started. I don't know what episode this is going to be, okay, so uh, welcome to whatever. To so, yeah. So, um, welcome to another episode of um, Behind the Mask. And we are here with the guys from Night's of Horror, which uh, was... Probably number third on the list that I wanted to interview. Third, fourth on the list. Um, three, bro. Hear yeah, that, mom? Top three. three. Yeah, mom. He, they're moving up. So um, oh, I made it. <laughs> so thank you guys for um, joining us today. Uh, no I know it's going to be a little bit of a short one because everyone's schedules are a little fucked. But, um, you know, we'll pick it back up on another one because uh, I know that we all can just sit and chat for, for a while. Um yeah. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm gonna. I'll start off with a question that you know Scott and I both were went through a list of questions that we want to ask you. Um, but and this is gonna be one of them. But why did you guys start start Nights of Horror? Nights of Horror was originally started to give our thoughts about specifically horror nights when we started it in 2017. Um, I I seen a lot of channels out there that did stuff like that speculation you know their thoughts on what they think of what got announced uh specifically a channel that was a huge inspiration when we started was uh tlev media um at the time they were called the league of extraordinary vloggers and i just liked the whole them getting together and talking about events and stuff it was a lot of cool a lot of fun stuff to to watch so i was like i i think i can do that so i picked up a camera that i got for christmas and i was like Let, let's try it out so um we started doing that uh it wasn't till what was it, Sammy? Twenty nineteen that you finally came on board. I came on. Came on board in twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Like November right? of twenty eighteen is when I. Came yeah. On. Um. At the time, I was I was in between hosts for the podcast, and I wanted a a good, good co-host to to help me, uh, do podcasts. And Sammy had just finished college and moved back to our hometown, and uh, we started hanging out more often. We never we never lost touch after high school. He was always a big supporter of what I did. And uh, he always would give me feedback and give his thoughts and stuff. But uh, we, we reconnected around November. I asked him if he wanted to do it. He said his initial reaction was, I don't know if I can talk past 30 minutes. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, well, let's just shoot something. Let's see how it goes. Uh, Sammy in the start was a natural. It, it was just, it was, it was in him. He's a great public speaker. He, he really is good with people. And uh, I knew from the start when we started something that we, we had something special uh, going forward. So uh, it was it was great to bring him on board. And it, we've been a duo ever since just talking about various haunts over the years. We've added more haunts. We've experienced new haunts, um, even through the worst of times, 2020. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we found a way to, to deliver content to people to enjoy and, and find other things to do during a pandemic when there wasn't much to do. So it, it's just been a fun ride. And, you know, we, it was a lot of fun to see Sammy go to his first, you know, big haunts and stuff and to see him interview and how much we've evolved so much. It, it's just been an absolute pleasure and a blast. That's, yeah. that's what's crazy to me is like you guys are doing a podcast channel that's based around the haunt community and essentially you guys are still very young in that world considering 
Anthony, you didn't go to your first haunt until 2008? 2008 was, yeah. Yeah, yeah 2008. Well, Sam, Sammy, what was your first year? Yeah, mine was, uh, it was like 09. Okay, uh, so yeah. Yeah, and then I took a, a nice uh, hiatus for 10 years because uh, I was a little scared. Uh, I still yeah. am scared, but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's the joy of it. <laughs> so, yeah. So now that, okay, Anthony gets this thing, he approaches you. Sam, Sammy, you might as well keep that mic down, dude. Yeah, you're you're, you're breathing. You, you're no, your breathing's not as bad with the mic down, honestly, with this mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want it to be like. <gasps> no, you're no, you're good, dude. No. Um. So when Anthony brought you on, what was your first thought like? You're like, okay, what am I, what am I offering to this podcast? Why are you asking me type of thing, or was it something like both you guys like, oh fuck yeah, let's just do it? Well, I think it was. I was a fan, like Tony said. I've always just been a supporter of his, whatever he's doing. Like I'm, I'm like his number one fan, like his biggest cheerleader, like, and his biggest critic too. Even though he gets mad at me, I always be trying to tell him how he can, you know, get to that next level. Um, and so I think it was just pretty natural. Um, at first, I was a little intimidated because, like, when I joined the channel, I didn't watch scary movies, I didn't go to these horror events. Um, even going into it, like, going to like not to the first time, I was. Like pooping my pants, and I I remember this moment uh, when we went to. <laughs> he doesn't cuss. Leave him alone. Uh, and we were we went to Four Nights, and we went to grab food at the uh, City Walk, and I was like, man, I bought a, whatever it's a fear. What is it called? Frequent, the frequent fear pass. Frequent fear pass. And I was like, damn, did I just waste my money? Because like I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy this. Because everyone hyped up Four Nights, this like, oh bro, it's super scary, like. Man, this it's like not is like a novice level. This is this is the big leagues here, and like I was like <laughs> I get, I went like walking in. I was like, oh man, I'm really scared. I left it like, nah, bro. It's it's the same thing. I mean, it, they're, they're all talented actors, all talented set designs, and you know that it's, it's always you know it's always good good mazes throughout. So I was like, I, I I think I just started reluctantly and scared, but like now I'm at a point where it's like. Let, let's do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I get to hang out with one of my best friends. Um, and it's it's usually a poor excuse to hang out, especially when I lived in California. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, we got to film a video, so I guess I got to go to your house. Right. So, darn. darn it. <laughs> but it's, it's, funny because, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's like I was telling Anthony, um, you guys were a pretty big inspiration for us starting this channel. Well, starting the podcast and putting it on my my business channel but to start the podcast and i had been like back and forth for a few years on whether or not i should do it and like life gets in the way you know um and so my <laughs> thought was like the only person that i would ever if i did want to do because i was just going to do it the hauntline style where it's just going to be me but i'm like i'm not a very big speaker i don't talk a lot and um I, i'm more of the background i just like to sit back and watch people talk so you know, when you mentioned, you know, you just get to hang out with your best friend. Like I was like, the only person that I would ever have with this is Scott, you know? And so, um, when I asked him to do it, like he was totally cool. Cause I was like, let's just do it together. Because when we're on the phone, we only talk haunt. We only talk scary farm and, and shit like that. So it's like, it's, it's, and that's the reason why I wanted to have you guys on because we kind of mirror each other, which is really cool. You know, um, so when you said that, it just kind of brought it all to light, and I'm like, that's fucking rad. So the biggest difference, obviously, is the fact that Jeremy and I actually have ex experience on the other side as, right. as talent. Right. You know, being in the inner workings of the industry. Also, one can say that you know, me and Jerry, me and Jeremy are the good-looking ones, and you and Sammy, where you're just the sidekick. That's very true. <laughs> I'm just kidding, having, Sammy. That must be a, that must be a wet dream that Anthony's having. <laughs> Bro, I'm I'm like a two out of ten. So, you know, I, I, take, I take whatever I can get. Oh, Sammy, God. no. <laughs> that's you're that's, solid. You're a solid, solid six, bro. So, solid <laughs> six. Solid six, bro. You guys have only been doing this in 2018, so three years now. Yeah, three I'm years, but three years, yeah. I mean, but we've known each other since high school. Like, it's right. not like we were, I, it was just some random guy I met. No, it was, we've known each other since my, my uh, sophomore year of high school, nice. which was, I believe, your senior year, right? Yeah, it was my senior year. So it was so, 20, I graduated in 2014, so then yeah. 2013. Oh, so you're, yeah. you're the older one. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't act like it. I act like I'm five years old. But That's all. We all do. Yeah. 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 Scott, like Scott's 12. 60 and he acts like he's 12, so. Yeah, I act like I'm 12 all the time. <laughs> I can't wait to act like I'm 12. <laughs> I've got seven more years to figure that one out. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you asked the question. Go ahead. Well, no, so you guys already talked about, obviously, the when and why. You know, you guys were super fans type of thing. And clearly, you guys still are fans because, I mean, Anthony, you and I talk on a regular basis. On yeah, we. I mean, we, we, we hang out almost every week. So. Yeah, and we always talk about your ideas and what you want to do in the podcast. Like, oh, I'm yeah. going to get this person and whatnot and you know the ever ever so um what's the word i'm looking for let's just say the tough guy to get is uh john cook and stop for stop guy. reminding me i know <laughs> stop reminding me he's a busy guy and i respect that yeah i know no he is that guy's the guy's a fucking madman so but anyway so let's get to the next thing sammy i'm gonna start with you first and i want to hear your i want to hear your side of it and then i want to hear if anthony's parallels to that or if you guys have different takes on it so um obviously on nights of war you guys do different formats you do your interviews the haunters react and you know the shoot the shits but they're all cool you know all these other things you do what is for you sammy the the most like the most favorite out of all the things you guys do on the on your channel well i think my most favorite thing is going is vlogging um, when we actually get to go out to events and things like that, I think it's it's always a fun time because mm -hmm. you know we get to capture it and it's something we can look back on um, and be like, oh, you remember when this? You remember when that happened? Um, and so it's capturing it and it's something we can enjoy then, now, and many years later. So I think that's one of my favorite things, even though we don't vlog a lot. But I just think it gives us the opportunity to like just look back and like be our, our true selves and just. There's just a, it happens to be a camera. Um, so I think that's my favorite. And then I think my second favorite is just getting to talk with people in the industry um, yeah. and pick their brains. Because like you said, we're kind of novices in this in this field. Um, and so it's nice to be able to hear other people's perspectives, especially when they're talking things like the gauntlet, like something I never got to touch, uh, you know, at Scary Farm. And, yeah. uh, you know, all these other different things or... Um, you know, a 13 Axe Manor, I believe that's what it was called. Another maze we just had on Haunters React. Like, just being able to see those different things um, and just getting to hear other people's feedback and ideas and getting to hear their stories, it's always fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool that, like, like you say, novices, but you guys get a lot of insight from people that are willing to come on to your show and talk about it. So that's yeah, that's fucking awesome. And it's not always like that. Yeah, so, it's a lot of fun. So what about you, Anthony? What's your favorite bit? It's literally, it's literally reversed for me. I, I love doing the podcast. Um, you know, it, it's like Sammy said, it's it's cool to get people on the show who not only are, and like you said, Scott, not only uh, are willing to talk about, you know, their stuff, but, you know, give a kind of behind the scenes of the industry that you don't get to see on a daily basis. You know, when you go to these events, you're seeing the show put on. Um, but with our show, we like to give the opportunity, and this goes for not only actors, but anyone who works behind the scenes, um, you know, set designers, all that stuff. Um, it gives us the opportunity to actually go into their minds behind the scenes of how it was to prepare these events, which I, I don't see a lot of people doing that these days. Uh, and it's something that I'm really interested in. Um, but I do like vlogging too with Sammy because it, it's a lot of fun. Like Sammy said, we just, we get to be ourselves with the camera and just kind of go and have a good time. Uh, I, I, specifically in 2020, I do remember going back and rewatching a lot of our 2019 footage because there was just nothing going on. And it was just cool to look back at when, when things were normal. So, um, but it's a lot of fun just, just going out there. Like, like Sammy said, meeting new people is a, is a blessing. And, and we've, we've made a lot of friends and uh, more people know us too than we know everyone's name. But we, we try to keep up with everyone that we know. But uh, it, it's fun to go to conventions and stuff too to go see everybody and have a good time. So obviously you guys live in two different states now. You know, yeah. You being in California, Anthony and... Sam, you being in Arizona, clearly you guys don't get to vlog much. So, like, when you guys connect, is that something you try to make a point of doing? Hey, let's just go do a quick vlog on whatever, or is it because everything's based in the haunt world? It just depends on when you guys connect for when season. When Sammy comes out, um, I, I tend not to like to bombard him with filming content unless it was something that, like, most recently, like we had the opportunity to obviously interview with Royalist again. And it was an in-studio podcast and Sammy happened to be in town. So I was like, let's just do that, you know, and because we have everyone in person, it would be perfect. 
Um, but when Sammy comes down, like in off season, I, I tend to just, I, I want to hang out with my friend more than I want to put a camera in front of his face and, and film something. Uh, Cause I much rather, it, it, it's stuff that's off camera that you don't have to film all the time that it, it has more memories to last and stuff. But when it comes haunt season, like me and him both have the same mindset. Like we know, okay, we got to film this video for this day. Um, let's, let's do a vlog just for the hell of it. So we have something extra to film during the haunt season. Uh, let's get this footage, you know? So, I mean, we and him, we have the same mindset, uh, when it comes towards, uh, if we have to go to convention to plan stuff or interviews or whatnot, me and him, we know how to, we know how to work the, the system pretty well with that. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I think what just tagging on to what Anthony said here is, yeah, I think it's planning what we're going to do. Like if like, for example, I just came out last weekend and that was like, Hey, I'm not going to see you. My mom wants to see me. So we're not going to film or anything, but this coming weekend when I come out for Awakened Spirits, it's like, it's game on. We're yeah. going to be cameras probably in hand 24 seven, probably even when we're sleeping. Like, <laughs> so all four of us are going to be at that show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I or mean, like if this is future, all four of us were at, we're that at show. the show. <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah, that's basically what it's going to be. Cause this is not going to be air until like November probably. Yeah. So yeah. we were at that show. We were at, I'm assuming, we were at that I'm show. Assuming, I'm, assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming hot season was great. Cause yeah. I think we all had a great time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I mean, like, yeah, it just depends on what the like what the parameters are. Like, I know that every time I see Tony from now through the end of October, it's gonna be vlogging, shooting at events, pretty tight schedule, that kind of stuff. But like, if I come out in March, I know unless we're planning to go do something, um, you know, like that's probably just gonna there's probably just gonna be just quality time and yeah. building that bond so that way when we do get into like business mode, it's not like well. Oh, I want to hang out with my friends. It's more of like we know we have an objective to accomplish at the end of the day, and we yeah. do have fun. At the, we do have fun doing that. Oh yeah, but we have. Sometimes we have a it gets a little stressful, you know, especially when the schedules get a little tight and you're running from one base to another or one panel to another. You know, that's you know we, we're conscious. We, we're conscious of that. Yeah. Kind of sucks. Like, oh yeah, schedules tight and it's business when you're when it's actually all for fun. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and that's the thing. What he said is like, we we still do have a really fun time because, you know, even though we're recording the panels, even though we're making all these videos, it's like a, a lot of our friends are going to be at these events, uh, i.e., you two. Um, so we get to you know hang out and talk with you guys. We don't have to have the camera on twenty four seven. You know, like it's in our hand. But you know, when we're waiting in line or we're walking around the vendors or whatever, we can always just you know BS with each other and you know, have yeah. a good time, you know, and it's a good time. And, and I know we're already planning stuff to do stuff after the event as well. So that, you know, it, I'm looking forward to things like that. And just, Oh dude, do you remember those people that we met at the bar for your birthday? <laughs> dude, <was> <laughs> remember we got kicked out of the bar? <laughs> dude, it was, it was, yeah. I mean, at one point I had my shirt off. It was nuts, bro. We had to carry you out. It was had to carry uh, me out. Happy birthday. <laughs> I was a little lost in the beginning of that. At first, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and then I caught on real quick. <laughs> so um, I guess that I, this question, um, I'm piggybacking on that question that Scott had. Like, this is mainly for Sammy. Since you've moved to Arizona, have you tried to be the Knights of Horror, like, contact out there? You know, visit haunts, connect to haunts out there. I know there's a few. Yeah, there's you... there's definitely a few. Uh, we got Fear Farm. We have 13th Floor. Um, so last year was my first year out here, so I really I was really just trying to catch a feel for the events, see what those look like before I like dive deep and try to like make media requests and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the other the other problem is, is I'm really bad at filming. I have the most shaky hands, um, and so like if you catch me filming something, it's probably gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, it's trying to, you know, work on, you know, I have to get like probably like a gimbal or something like that. Yeah. So I need some stable footage and things like that. So. A lot of cameras now have that stability sensor inside. So yeah. if you move a little bit, it's going to stabilize it. Yeah. And I'm also a scaredy cat. So I'm also scared that I'm going to throw the camera at someone <laughs> on accident. <laughs> It's a, just a knee-jerk reaction. Just duct tape it around your wrist, man. There you go. Yeah. Or just, not, just get a head cam one. Yeah, yeah. You know, GoPro. GoPro. Yeah, GoPro, GoPro it, huh? There you go. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. It's something to consider. So that's yeah, but eventually, I mean, that's the goal. Is eventually, to, I think, with the channel in general, is eventually to be hitting haunts in multiple states, 
and really making this, I mean, ideally one day to make it a full-time gig. Or right. we're just, you know, enjoying it, you know, during the during the season. Yeah. Getting to go, you know, to many different haunts and getting to experience different people's creativity. Because I think that's the one thing that, I, I as much as I enjoy that, like, getting scared and that tension, I think above all is I enjoy the, the craft. I enjoy looking at the scenic design, the lighting design, the sound design, the way the scare actors, you know, choices they make in their day-to-day. Um, so, so many and so, levels of creativity of different, you know, different areas to put together at a haunted event. Yeah. So piggy, piggybacking on what you just said, Sammy, this is a question for the two of you. What is your most favorite thing to see at a haunt? Besides getting scared, everybody, oh, I like to get scared. What is the one thing that you want to see when you go to a haunted haunted event? Well, at least for me, uh, I, I was a huge fan of, uh, in 2019, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. Uh, specifically for the interaction they had with the guests as far as the uh, the characters and, and the guests go. It was just a lot of fun to, you know, I like I like a haunt that tells a story. Um, and Knott's and Hayride have lately been doing that with, of course, the Origins layover and, you know, the Midnight Falls layover. Mm. Um, and it's very cool to hear the overall story through different characters and their perspective of what they see in events that go down. Uh, specifically with Haunted Hayride in 2019, it was a lot of fun because, you know, they had the townsfolk kind of walk around in the main area of the haunt and they you go up to them and they each tell you stories of who they were and, you know, what they did and, and what their role is around the town and stuff. And eventually, after 45 minutes of us doing that to every character, uh, we eventually found our way into a maze, which, you know, furthered the story even more. Um, so I'm a big fan of uh, interaction and, and really story development because uh, if, if you sell me on a story, then I'm going to feel uh, involved into that story. And also if you interact with me at haunts, and I know a lot of haunts are very kind of, you know, they're not supposed to interact. You know, a lot of them are, you know, you're getting, you're going to, you're getting, you're paying the money to get scared and stuff. But, right. you know, just, just the little things like that when you see characters interact, especially uh, this in 2019 at Knott's, we got to see a lot of the ghost town people, uh, you know, hype up their characters as to what how they fit into that origin storyline so you know I, I like seeing character development overall and 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 just interaction really yeah. story development That's i think cool. for me i'm a i'm a sucker for like facts and like doing different things so for example you know uh we joke on the channel about the cookbook um about uh, the many different things he does throughout uh you know some of the haunts he's been involved in um so like for example like what i i just think like of the deaths the depths and like when that one room where they have like the fog and the green lighting and the monsters popping up um, I, I, I i'm a sucker for that just because of like i just like the way that they're using lighting and the fog to like create this really cool effect or like um, when shadowlands was there the way they were using like the i forget what it was like the bungee cables like, you know the bungee cables that's what it was called yeah, yeah. yeah. the strobe like, light they're using yeah and the strobe lights and all of that like i think that's really cool or um, thinking about HHN and um, Pandora is really they were using the lighting um, and the glow in the dark features. That was like super cool to me. Yeah. So a big part of it for you is the, effects. Like, the visual side. It's the effects, yeah. 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 The lighting effects and any type of effects to uh, enhance the scare, really. Yeah. Yeah, because like, don't get me wrong, like, I, like, like, as much as it's cool to like walk through somewhere, it's kind of dark, dim lit monster pops out mm -hmm. another monster pops out like that gets old after a while i like when they try to like elevate it to another level and try to use other different things to you know really sell the story and, and sell the scare yeah yeah makes sense no that is not yeah. i mean they always say like you can have a great haunt but if the talent's not there to make it great you know it's not it's not going to be good but that's kind of a catch-22 because if you have you know, a haunt that's not really got nothing in it, black walls or whatever, the talent could be, you know, prime grade A and it still may not hit everybody in the same way because it doesn't have both elements. Well, like, fortunate enough for me, like, I had the opportunity to really hang out with Scott all summer and just kind of learn a lot of, and that's why I picked, like, like a lot of character development and stuff because uh, Scott and I would just talk about different scare, uh, scare actors and, you know, different character developments and whatnot and and just overall from the past and whatnot so just to just kind of getting that idea and picking his brain about that kind of stuff it really kind of made me focus on that stuff more so yeah but i 
that's the what really uh, kind of triggered this podcast too was because I'm huge on scare on uh, scare um, on character development, and right. I initially wanted this channel just to be solely character development um, and talk about that, but it, it limited it limited a lot, um, so we opened it up more. But um, it's interesting because like the two things that you guys are interested in are like my main my two main things are creative scares, whether it comes from you know whatever. Um, as well as character development, so that's I think that's kind of cool. A lot of fun to see, uh, especially if you go to the if you know if you go to like something like Knots every week where you have the pass, and then you get to see like some of the your favorite characters add to their character each week, and by the final end of the run, you get to see like the final result. Yeah. And something worked, something did it. You you see changes every week. That's the fun part about being a haunt fanatic and going every week because you get to see something new every week with character development. So. Yeah, it's kind of. It's kind of yeah, cool yeah. when you're when you're actually working there. Going back to when we used to work there, it's kind of cool because when you see someone start something new, you see that character evolve. Right. And that is always just always fun to watch. You know, yeah. it's 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 extremely inspiring too. You know. Yeah, definitely. I I 100% agree. Yeah. So on that on that note right there, the next question that we that Jeremy and I kind of talked about is like. You guys are into character development. You like seeing how actual visual part evolves. So with that being said, like if you were to go to a haunt, let's just use knots because that's one that's pretty in the forefront for all four of us. Right. What's the favorite, what's the most favorite scare tactic for each of you to see like when you go in there? Let's, let's go ahead and start with Anthony first on this one. And then Sammy, you can answer after him. Yeah, I mean, after I think after talking with you a lot too. I mean, I remember me and you were talking about you know different scare tactics and you know when we go with the QM sliders a lot to to do training and whatnot. We were you know we were talking about a lot of this stuff. Um, overall, you know, I, I think sliding is an amazing tool. I think you know the everything you know loud stuff is an amazing tool. However, you know if I were to put myself in those shoes and how I would approach things, I'm a pretty tall guy. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, I'm six foot six, so. I, I, you know, and, and sliding for me is really cool. If I can ever learn it, I would, but I just feel like I've had too many injuries in the past that I just don't need any more. And, and I know what, I know what Scott, you know, if I ever asked Scott to like, give me a few pointers, like he would guide me in the right direction to do the right things. But, um, I, I just, I, I, for me, I've always been like, I think I can use my height more than anything for a scare. Um, as far as, so I don't need, sli I don't need pads. I don't need gloves. Like I just need just give me a prop and and just give me a, a, a dope ass costume and a, and a sick ass face and I, I can work with that I really can your, your, um, your tactic would be intimidation intimidation 100%. pretty much yeah because uh, even not in makeup at like work or something if I'm standing behind someone and they don't see me they immediately get scared because they turn around and they see this tall ass guy behind them where if I were to just blend that with a costume makeup and a prop with fog and the right lighting at night, it's even it's even scarier than that, and I and I've always said Sammy and I would make a great team of just two towers walking down Fog Alley, just like you know I don't even know what's gonna happen. You just see two giant people walking after you. Yeah. Jeremy, the new Gino of Gino England and Mikey Robles. Yep. There you go. Yep. So yeah, that's the thing too. It's like sliding isn't the end all be all, and it doesn't yeah. work for every no. single character. It doesn't. Right. No. You know I mean? Yeah. Sammy, what about you, man? Yeah, I'm a sucker for character movement. <laughs> Um, I like when a character is able to like develop some really creepy movements that make sense to their character, um, because like I think I think it's easy to jump around a corner and go boo, and that's you know that's a, you'll catch one off guard. Eventually it'll get old, but like if you can do some really creative movements and kind of make people feel eerie, like I think that goes that goes a long way. So kind of uh, like um, what Gecko does. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Get yeah. into some person's psyche. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen people, it, it's weird because I'm on the same page with him, though. Like, when I go to a haunt and I see someone put their limbs in, like, positions where it just doesn't belong <laughs> or, like, I, I for sure know I can't do, it is the creepiest thing ever. I'm like, how are you doing that with your arm right now? If I were to try to do that, I would definitely be pulling something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the thing, too. It's like, even when I would when I was still working at Knott's and you stand and you watch all your people, you know, it's like, you really know pretty much what every person in your area does as right. far as regular movements, and then you're sitting there watching them do something else, like, oh, that's good, you know, because it triggers something, and it's like, ooh, you know, and then you see what they're doing 
to the next guest with that movement. Yeah, you know? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So we have about 10 minutes left, and I have one last question. And you kind of you kind of answered it already, Anthony. And this is the question that I was looking forward to hearing from, uh, the answers from both of you guys. Do you, or will you, or do you plan on ever wanting to become a scare actor? Mm. That's a good one. And if That's so... A- what character would you want to do and where would you want to work? That is a good question. We get asked that a lot, <laughs> like a lot. Uh, we do, uh, especially me, especially when, when I do interviews and then after I see these people in person. Uh, and I always tell them, you know, if the opportunity ever arises, I'm not going to say no to it. Uh, if I have an opportunity and I have the time to do it, I definitely will jump on that, that wagon because, it, you know, I've been going to these events for so long now. And, you know, I always say like, fuck, I want to do this. Like, this looks a lot of fun, you know, and, and this looks cool and this, you know. However, uh, my my thing is, I think uh, for, like, if I were to ever do it for a first year, I would start at a home haunt first and then kind of get a feel for things mm-hmm. just so I kind of know, okay, this didn't work for me, that didn't work. And then eventually, if I ever had the opportunity to go to, like, somewhere like Knott's or Queen Mary or something, I would definitely I would definitely do it. Even if I have, it was offered to do it for a night, I, I would love to do it, but... Um, and then the second part was, what was it about character? Or yeah, like what you what, think I would, what would you want to be? I, uh, I mean, that, that's all, de- that's all theme dependent. So it is. So and, that and kind of, know, that's the reason why it's a piggyback. Uh, so let's start off with, uh, I mean, you already mentioned like, oh, I'd want to start off with a, like a home haunt. Okay. But right. let's just say you were going to do a theme park haunt or a bigger a theme haunt. park, which one would you want to do? And then what would you, where would you want to work in that park? And what would your character be? You're going to be a little shocked about my answer because, uh, you know, I think I've just been getting influenced by the the wrong but right people lately. <laughs> and uh, I, I honestly, after hanging out with a lot of these people, I would love to go scare at Queen Mary. I really yeah. would. Um, that's, that's not a if wrong it, answer. If, 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 it ever, if it ever happens again, yeah. Um, yeah, ye of little faith there, buddy. I think that's uh, because... I hope it does. I think that's because... Um, I think subconsciously it's because you're hearing, like, oh, it, you're, you have freedom. Uh, yeah. and and that's just me. Um, like if it, I had a choice I would go to Queen, Queen Mary as well it ain't even about the freedom to me honestly like I, I am a big time like I'll follow rules and whatever like it, I, right. I don't care like you know put me in a maze whatever I don't I don't you know I'm not picky about where I go I, I if I get put in a maze then I'm gonna use every bit of the environment that I'm in to to my advantage and and figure out creative new ways to be like okay how can I do this and then you know one night I'll be like I'm gonna test this out see if this works um but I've always been, you know, like I said, I'm a tall guy, so I think an intimidating character on me would be awesome. And I've always looked at myself as the setup. I, I'm the guy that they look at, mm-hmm. but then you don't see the other guy coming out of nowhere to get you with a scare. Yep. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm always the, I, I'm the distraction while the other guys get the good know. scares. I kind of think the opposite of that. It's the velociraptor you the, approach. You get the smaller guy that starts the attack, and all of a sudden people start running, they turn around, they run into you. It can work both it ways, honestly. Both ways, it really yeah. can. And if I if I had the right, you know, if I had a, if I get a good, if I were to ever get like a really good running partner, that is way smaller than I am, which it, it shouldn't be hard to find. Right. <laughs> but you know, you get the right partner, and and we can we can cook something up good. Yeah. We can really, we really can. What about you, Sammy? Uh, I think I would do it. I don't know about a whole season. I think that would be a, a really really large commitment. Uh, I mean, that's not something in my career goals. But like doing it for a night or two, I think would be definitely fun. Or, or getting like a home haunt when I got, you know, if I ever get a home and have the ability to like build something and, you know, scare little kids coming through trick or treating, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I was looking through my phone right now, trying to see if I still had any of my characters that I was like thinking mm-hmm. like I, I think would be cool, but I couldn't find them here in my notes. Um, and so I'm drawing a blank on that. Um, but like anyone that would accept me, I think would be cool. I'm not super picky. I can yeah. follow rules because I enjoy rules. Um, I think rules make <laughs> you my rarely life. hear that ever. I enjoy rules. <laughs> I like parameters. I'm not a, I'm not super creative. So if someone tells me like what to do, how to do it, and they want me to fit in this box, like that's easy. So if somebody that's- says, "Hey, use your creativity. This is where you're gonna be. You can scare how you want right here. You're gonna lose your mind because you don't know what to do." Yeah, I'm just gonna start overthinking it. That's so funny because that's how I was my first year in a maze at Knotts. It, yeah. it, they were just like, "This is where you are. Scare here, blah blah." blah. And I was like, 
oh shit okay cool like they gave you like they gave me the rules and i was like well i better follow these rules and i wouldn't stay out i wouldn't move out of my box until like the last <laughs> the last night i kind of moved yeah. around in front but and then when i go to ghost town the next year they're just like and yeah, just be creative just go have fun oh okay you know and you're just gonna go around so it's it's funny you mentioned that Sam. but uh yeah. they always they always this, the second part to that answer i always tell people is well, the reason why I don't do it is because who would be the one recording you guys? Good point. So that's always yeah. the second part to my answer, you know? So, I yeah, mean, like want, I said, opportunity ever arises. Ads. Yeah. <laughs> opportunity <laughs> ever arises. Uh, I'm grabbing Sammy. We'll do a duo of some sort, and it, it would be a lot of fun. But for now, I, I like being behind the camera. I like uh, interviewing people, and I, I, I like to, to meet the people who, who bring these, these characters to life. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. We, already have our, we already have our duo down. Um, you're going to catch me on a bench at Ghost Town, falling okay. asleep, and that way you, I'll draw them in that way, and then Tony's going to hit him with the left or a right out of nowhere. Um, it's going to be great. You know what would be fun? And I, I think we should we should work on this because, you know, um, my career is character design, visual effects, stuff like that. I think that right. we should have a little uh, design session, do a live design session, and we actually will create two characters for the two of you based off the two of you. What do you think? Okay. Uh, that sounds that like sounds fun. fun. It down. was totally out of left field, but just what Sammy said right now, I'm like, dude, that would be so fucking rad to have like, you know, I'm down. I'm like, you know, cause like Sam, I, I Sammy, I don't know you. So all I hear is like, Oh, he's just always falling asleep. And I'm like, okay, well, why don't we create like this? That's mostly Scott saying that, by the way, I'm just, <laughs> he's always falling asleep. Yeah. I always say that you always fall asleep, Sammy. It's a it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. Yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I'm always I'm gonna have I have a nap schedule for after this. Come on. But we can, <laughs> <laughs> but we can create like these two characters, you know, one it's that's like characters right there, dude. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, and that's yeah. that's what we did throughout all of you know Jay Lee when we did masks. Like the we always created swings. characters, and I think it would be a lot of fun just to come up with like just parameters and we could do a multi-part section and do parameters of like okay this is what the character is going to be like and the next one will be the sketch session and then i can go in and just do my own little video and yeah. actually like live sculpting and designing and be a lot of fun dude that'd be uh, fun the big the biggins twins the biggins twins the biggins, the biggins twins, twins. The biggins duo. well it was a lot of fun it's funny that you bring that up because i i remember on the channel last year we did uh maze treatments you know we didn't know we knew there was not gonna be many major haunts so i wanted to see what how people how creative people can get which was fucking cool dude dude hotline made a maze out of the matrix i didn't think that would work in a million years and i heard the concept yeah. and i was like let why isn't this happening today right right like that's an amazing con and then he did one on the terminator dude yeah and i was like what no, the guy's talented. It's dude. an amazing concept, pun intended. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man, we're gonna get him on too. Um, you know, the two you you know, you guys doing something that I think is extremely, extremely awesome for the industry, um, especially for the SoCal outside. Uh, I know there's a few happening that are from the uh, Midwest and the East Coast, uh, yep. but you know, you guys are covering the SoCal side, um, and uh, and it's funny because um, you know, Hotline. We have a connection, Scott, myself, and he has a connection with a buddy of ours who passed away. So, and that's how um, I ended up, um, you know, kind of connecting with him. And I right. think it would be great to for for us to interview him and have a little uh, discussion about about Daryl. He but he's on a whole nother level of things, dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, you guys are de definitely different, and I and I love that. I think that's yeah. great, and that's the reason why we wanted to do something different. You know, we don't want all we don't want to all do the same thing. Um, so. But um, with all that said, uh, we have to end it. Um, I really don't want to, man. I want to freaking sit here and talk to you guys for hours. We'll do a part two. Another, uh, just let me know. We'll we do are. a part two. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we will. We'll do a part two. Um, you know, the timing on this one just uh, didn't work out. So um, mm -hmm. I just want to thank you guys personally uh, for taking out time to chat with us for this little bit. Um, you know, you're a big inspiration to us and to a lot of people out there in this industry. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. We love it. I appreciate it, man. We we love doing what we do. It's an absolute pleasure that hopefully we can turn this to a full time career one day. And it's not even really a job for us. It's a hobby, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, our ultimate goal: two things that we want to do: get a, a studio and make like a full time mindless horror podcast set, 
Nice. And do a haunt tour and every hit one haunt every single state in the United States. So That'd we've already good. got we're already gonna have three on the map. So we need uh forty seven more. <laughs> so. That'll be cool, man. Well, all right. Well, we're gonna end it here. Do you guys have you know? Go ahead and plug yourselves. Uh, I mean, we're gonna put it. Well, actually, it'll Social be. Media. I'm yeah. gonna let Sammy do that. Sammy, plug, Sammy's the plug pro yourself, at that. bro. Specialty here. Um, so if y'all want to check us out on Twitter, it is at Knights of War, and that's spelled with an N, not like a knight in shining armor but knight like the night sky uh and then on instagram at the knights of war and the only reason why they're different is twitter has a cap limit yep. so you can't put the in the front yeah Perfect. and then we're also on youtube uh knights of horror the knights of horror actually but uh we you know podcast everything all the, a lot of fun stuff anything to do with haunt and horror we do it uh you can find our, our podcast also on like spotify google podcast all that wherever you stream podcasts really so appreciate it uh madhouse podcasting network fam right in the same same area man i'm so happy that we got them on the, on the network man that's awesome yeah man we're excited in two different states <laughs> yeah all right well we're gonna end this episode here and uh we will see you guys in the next one so uh make sure to like and subscribe and share this with everybody and we will see you then do it or Dieterman will find you yeah he will find you and he'll okay. stalk you <laughs> Adios, guys. see you guys Deuces.